Welcome back guys. Now in this video let's discuss about a clinical features of hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. First let's discuss about hyperthyroidism. Guys in previous videos we have discussed that the thyroid hormones are catabolic hormones which means they broke down the lipids they causes the lipolysis right in the same way they increases the basal metabolic rate what does i mean by basal metabolic rate i have already explained the number of calories required to maintain homeostasis for a day for a 24 hours duration so whenever there is more there is more number of thyroid hormones means whenever more thyroid hormones are present in the body automatically the number of calories needed for maintaining homeostasis will automatically increase okay so what i'm trying to put into your mind is when a person who is having hyperthyroidism, the person will be slim. The person is going to be slim in nature. He is not going to be obese. He is going to be slim. Why he is slim? Because the number of calories which are getting burned down are going to be increased. So he is slim. But interesting fact is that, see, look at here. He is taking more food intake. Even though he is taking more food intake, he is still slim he is having uh, a body which is very much slim why he is taking more food intake that's the question we have discussed thyroid hormones are catabolic hormones thyroid hormones increases the basal metabolic rate now imagine that i am a person who is having hyperthyroid states now in my body there is a lot of t3 t4 now that t3 what it will be doing increasing the basal metabolic rate so i need more calories to maintain homeostasis in my body for the next 24 hours okay so should i have to take more food or less food yes to get more calories i have to take more food so thyroid hormones are in a, in a condition of hyperthyroidism there will be increased food intake as well as hyperthyroidism state is a heat intolerant state why why because thyroid hormones are thermogenic hormones so normal t3 t4 normal body temperature increase t3 t4 increase body temperature already their body is getting much and much warmer so they cannot live in a place where it is hot so they cannot live in hot climate so heat intolerant okay all, all, the, all the time these people love to live in cold places one more point i want to put into your mind as their body temperature is getting increased so they'll be having what kind of skin they'll be having dry skin or moist skin they will be having moist skin okay skin which is uh, totally sweating moist skin will be there now let's talk about uh, some features in females guys t3 t4 hormones they can also have certain role in uh, ovarian function so these uh, these females who are having too much amount of t3 and t4 they will be suffering with oligomenorrhea so what does i mean by oligomenorrhea they will be having delayed periods okay normally the menstrual cycle should be coming uh, once in every 28 weeks but now she will be getting her periods once in 50 days or like you know once in 60 days that's the oligomenorrhea now after that what about the tendon reflexes? See, imagine these T3, T4 hormones are more like a sympathetic hormones. So, if there is more T3, T4, more activity, more tendon reflexes will be seen. So, tendon reflexes are increased. And one more important point I just want you to note here. See, they will be having increased heart rate. Their heart rate is going to be increased. Why their heart rate is increased? Yes, we have already seen thyroid hormones makes the myocardium more sensitive to catecholamines. So, more T3, T4, myocardium will be more sensitized to catecholamines. So, even with little norepinephrine or epinephrine, heart will be beating much faster. Now, one important point uh, which I want you to know here is that resting tachycardia, even the person is resting. Imagine that I am the person who is having hyperthyroidism. Even when I am resting, my heart is pounding, my heart is beating more number of times. That is a resting tachycardia. Resting tachycardia is a reliable sign. Okay, let me write it here. Resting tachycardia is a reliable sign. Relevant sign of what? Resting tachycardia is a reliable sign of hyperthyroidism. Okay. Now, these patients will be having fine tremors. And if you, if you look at their eyes, they will be having exophthalmus. Eyes are protruding out of the orbital cavity. They will be having bulged eyes. 
okay so exophthalmos is seen and especially if you look at the shin region okay shin region that's the tibial region I, i'm just pointing out here see there is a uh, deposition of the mucopolysaccharide materials which is called as pre tibial means just uh, on the tibial side on the tibial region the shin region there is deposition of the mucopolysaccharides which is called as pre tibial mix edema okay so we usually uh, students think that mix edema is something which is only seen in uh, hypothyroidism but not pre tibial mix edema is something seen with uh, hyperthyroidism okay now here you can see that the person's eyes are just protruding out or bulging out this is called as exophthalmos and because of uh, excessive amount of t3 t4 even subperiosteal bone resorption will happen okay subperiosteal bone resorption let me write it down here this acrobachy which is nothing but sub periosteal bone resorption okay it's a bone resorption even in this x rays you can see there is bone resorption which is happening so this is called as acrobachy which is one of the clinical features which will, which are associated with the hyperthyroidism but important point is the most reliable sign of hyperthyroidism is a resting tachycardia and pretibial mixed edema is seen with hyperthyroidism and acrobachy please don't forget these points and one more important point i want you to know here see normally thyroid hormones are just like a sympathetic hormones okay they will activate your body they will make you more alert whenever there is hyperthyroidism this t3 t4 hormones can also act on the brain and makes the person more anxious usually if you look at these persons they are more talkative if you try to talk with them they are going to talk uh, so many things uh, just by talking with them you can diagnose that these patients are having hyperthyroidism just having a call like you know having a talk uh, in on mobile itself can like you know as a good doctor you can say okay these persons might be having hyperthyroidism why because these patients are more anxious okay all the time they are not depressed they are anxious they are worried about like you know small small things so how is their uh, nature they are more anxious or anxiety seen that's one of the clinical feature which i have missed in this table now we have seen all the important points regarding hyperthyroidism now let's discuss some important points about the hypothyroidism see hyperthyroidism patients their basal metabolic rate is increased so that they are slim in nature okay so their outfit is going to be slim but hypothyroidism there is no t3 no t4 so that how their metabolism got decreased now the amount of food they need is going to be decreased and they will be having usually weight gain okay so these persons will be having weight gain and because of the weight gain these people look obese the number of calories which is getting broken down to maintain homeostasis is getting grad very much decreased okay so they are having weight gain and they look obese and how much amount of food they will take they take they will take very less food but still they are getting weight gain and guys i want you to remember one more point in the hyperthyroidism which i have missed please look at here in hyperthyroidism the patients are going to suffer with diarrhea okay please uh, take it here the patients will be suffering with the diarrhea very important point okay the patient will be suffering with diarrhea why because the more t3 t4 they will act on the jt causes the like you know abnormal motility of the jt so proper absorption uh, proper digestion and proper absorption is not going to happen that will cause diarrhea okay why i am saying this is because the patient with hypothyroidism one of the uh, most uh, commonly encountered feature even in clinics is the constipation usually hypothyroidism patients they will suffer with constipation and these people are cold intolerant no t3 no thermogenesis if there is no thermogenesis in the body heat production is not there in the body so already they are getting cooler so would they they like to live in warm environment or cold environment they would definitely like to live in warm environments so they can't live in a place where there is acs so they are cold intolerant already there is no t3 no thermogenesis is happening in the body so they don't like cold they like warm so what is the nature of their skin if you look at the skin nature their skin is going to be dry okay they will be having dry scaly skin okay they will be having dry uh, scaly skin why uh, because uh, uh, the body is getting cooler and cooler there is no sweat production in hyperthyroidism i have taught you the 
patients because of more thermogenesis their body is going to be sweaty and moist but here in hypothyroidism the patient will be having dry scaly skin okay and they are also cold intolerant cold intolerant and in the female a female who is suffering with a hyperthyroidism she will be having delayed cycles which means she is getting menses once in two months but if a female is suffering with a hypothyroidism means yes menstrual abnormalities will be seen but not the delayed menses it's menorrhagia menorrhagia means excessive bleeding she is going to have excessive bleeding see normally uh, during periods how much amount of blood loss is permissible normally 50 ml to 70 ml 50 ml to 70 ml is okay if she is having more than 80 ml of blood if she is having bleeding more than 80 ml of blood then we can say that she is having excessive bleeding okay something like that and if you look at the tendon reflexes the tendon reflexes are going to be decreased and very important point i want you to know here is hung up ankle jerk if you do the ankle jerk so you see the ankle jerk is going to be very much hung up okay this is not ankle jerk like you know i'm just giving an example whenever you try to uh, do ankle jerk test the ankle jerk test is going to be hung up so hung up ankle jerk is the most reliable sign most reliable sign of hypothyroidism okay so this is a most reliable sign these are some important points which you need to know regarding hypothyroidism after this let's talk about some anti thyroid drugs now imagine that there was this one patient who is having hyperthyroidism she is suffering with the hyperthyroidism now what we have to do as a good doctor we have to decrease the amount of t3 t4 production in her body we all know thyroid gland is the one which synthesizes the t3 t4 by using iodine as a raw material iodine in the blood or i should say like you know that uh, uh, i minus ions iodide ions which are present in the blood they will be uptaken by a transporter called as sodium iodide symporter with the help of sodium iodide symporter iodine is getting absorbed into the into the follicular cells and with that iodine there is oxidation organification and coupling reaction is going to happen at the end of that t3 t4 production is going to happen we know so how we can decrease the t3 t4 hormone production by inhibiting the first step what is that uptake of iodine iodine uptake is under the control of which transporter sodium iodine symporter so now what we can do is we can inhibit sodium iodide symporter inhibitors okay we can use sodium iodide symporter inhibitor kind of drugs uh, which include perchlorates thiocyanate so perchlorates and thiocyanates they are what kind of drugs they are anti thyroid drugs which will inhibit sodium sodium iodide symporta now let's talk about the thyroid peroxidase inhibitors now what exactly is thyroid peroxidase guys we have discussed thyroid peroxidase is an enzyme which helps in process of oxidation organification and coupling reactions now if you can inhibit thyroid peroxidase the entire process of t3 t4 production is going to be affected so what are the drugs which will inhibit thyroid peroxidase the drugs include carbimazole carbimazole methimazole okay and ptu propyl thiouracil so carbimazole methimazole and propyl thiouracil are the drugs which will inhibit thyroid peroxidase now let's discuss about peripheral conversion now we have already discussed that t4 is going to be converted into t3 t4 in active form is going to convert it into active form where in peripheral tissues with the help of 5 prime d iodinase now if you can inhibit this step means if you can inhibit this step there is decreased t3 now if there is no t3 the thyroid actions are not going to be seen very simple see the one who is showing all the effects is t3 so one way we can decrease the symptoms of hyperthyroidism is by inhibition of peripheral conversion how we can do that by using drugs like propranolol so remember p for p peripheral conversion is inhibited by pro pranolol okay propranolol 
propranolol is a beta blocker as well as propyl thiouracil so propyl thiouracil will also inhibit the peripheral conversion and propyl thiouracil also inhibits thyroid peroxidase okay guys these are some important uh, topics about hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism as well as uh, the drugs which can treat hyperthyroidism it's very simple how hypothyroidism is treated hypothyroidism means there is no t3 t4 which are getting produced in the body so what we can give we can replace the t3 t4 by drugs like thyroxine so if i am the patient imagine if i am the patient who is suffering with hypothyroids what you are going to give to me you are going to give me a drug called as thyroxine which is t4 after taking that thyroxine in my body that thyroxine will be converted into t3 it will show its effects okay so these are some important points which you need to know for your exam hope the video is helpful thank you